Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. And this is The Cube. The Cube is our live mobile studio. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Chris Selland is here. He's the head of business development at Vertica. Chris, I love having you on because you're a former analyst, right? So you got that angle going. And you know what, what we analysts like to, like to talk about, how we think. Yeah, but at the same time, you're at the forefront of innovation you know, inside of Vertica, driving new value for customers. So, First of all, welcome to theCUBE. It's great to be here again. And yeah, it's, it's fun having sat on your side of the table and then being on my side of the table as well. I guess here it's just one table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun last year at the, uh, the uh, Vertica user conference. Mm -hmm. You had a bunch of <laughs> myself and, uh, and, and, and uh, Vinny and, uh, and uh, the database guru. Come on, well, help me out. Oh, uh, Kurt, Kurt uh, Monash. Kurt Monash, yeah, uh, yeah. up on stage. That was really fun, so yes. I want to thank you for inviting me to do that. Yep. And, and I thought it was a really good segment. You moderated it. And uh, so you've got that, that, that angle. So I want to start with, put on your analyst hat for a minute. Oh, okay. What's happening in, in the marketplace? You know, we just did this survey, Jeff Kelly's you know, Wikibon big data survey. A, an enormous percentage of people said they're shifting resources from traditional EDW mm -hmm. into Hadoop. Like 60% said they've done it already. Right. Another 30% said we're going to be doing it by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That is a massive, the only 1% one, only 1 said big data is a buzzword of unclear meeting. Right. Which is seeing a massive shift toward the market that you're right in the center in. So, right. what's happening? Well, first of all, I think it's clearly signaling that big data is real. Mm -hmm. It's very real. And Organ organizations, I always say companies, but it's also true public sector, non commercial. There's so much going on in government, but across the board, everybody's realizing that there's, there's a very fundamental shift going on today in how business gets done and how you know, government gets done and how things get done. And it's all around analytics and it's all around understanding our customers, our suppliers, our operations. And you know, there's just more and more and more data and how good I am at analyzing that and putting it together and putting it in a form where the leaders of my organization can understand and use it is really the key. Um, I think what was interesting, I actually was looking at the survey that you guys just completed. You know, you do have a very high percentage of organizations claiming they're doing big data, which is great. And yes, we were together at uh, Hadoop Summit last week. At the same time, you look at who's using what and from a Hadoop standpoint, yes, there's a lot of you know, exploratory work going on and how can I use some of these new technologies like Hadoop, but yet you sort of say, well, who's using like a commercial distribution as opposed to a free one? And very large percentage are still using a free one. Nobody's so, paying for it. Right, nobody's yeah. paying for it. So <laughs> if this was Well, about true, 25%, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, right? there's yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. some. Yeah. And yeah. I, but it's not the majority. It right. is not the majority. No, it's far from the majority. And what it's really indicative of is that, and this is what we hear all the time, from customers is that they really haven't figured out exactly what they're going to do with all this technology yet. There's a desire to upgrade what they have been doing because they're starting to realize the infrastructures they have in place, you know, their sort of legacy enterprise data warehouses are running out of gas, they can't support these new data types, you know, all of this social data, machine data, internet of things data, you know, traditional EDWs were not built to handle any of this and they can't scale and they don't perform and they're way too expensive. So they want to get on the new technology but they haven't really figured out how yet. So Jeff, so, that's probably, I mean, that's yes. the interesting thing about Vertica, is you is they're the bridge, right, right, between kind of the old and new. You probably saw this at Hadoop Summit Yeah, last and week, I was right? going to say, the other two factors that came up a lot at Hadoop Summit is one is changing the temporal aspect of the mm -hmm. analysis of the data from getting the data, then reviewing it, then making a business decision, to actually collecting, viewing, analyzing the data in real time and making a decision as things are happening, completely right. different shift, and I think that's what unlocks a giant value creation in the technology. And then the other piece is moving it down the, the, the people stack, down from the data scientists, right. down from the PhDs, into, into the line of business folks who can understand it and make, uh, and make intelligent decisions that aren't necessarily earth shattering or sweeping or giant strategic shifts, right. but getting their job done better on a day to day basis. And again, I think. Those, another factor that just unlocks the huge value that the big data promise really offers. So, so that Absolutely. requires ecosystem, it requires yeah. partnerships. So, yeah. so how do you, as Jeff's saying, how do you get the hands, how do you get the data 
because uh, right now it's confined, not right now, but a year ago or so, it was confined inside of the data science and the data geeks. How do you get it into the hands of business people that can actually act on it? Right, well, to, to sort of pick up first on what Jeff was just saying and what you just picked up on as well, you know, the, the, the terminology we've been using at Vertica is three words, store, explore, and serve. And um, you know, I, I think right now, first of all, you can't do this unless A, you're keeping all of it. I mean, it's, we, and it, I'm sure Colin, you know, talked about this as well. We talked about Dragline, I haven't had a chance to right? see his I mean, segment yet, yeah. but um, you know, we hate when people throw away data. I mean, there's no good reason to do that anymore. And that's where technology like Hadoop is so powerful because I can at very low cost, you know, basically keep everything. So, but storing it and just sort of putting it in one place, particularly if you don't have enough form that can be analyzed, isn't enough. So then, then you got to be able to explore it and look at it and see what I got and figure out what I might be able to do with it. But then ultimately, you don't get value unless you serve it. And you have to serve it up to not just, like you said, the data, data science display play a huge role in everything we just described, but ultimately, it's not creating any value for it unless you can serve it up in a way it can actually be used by the organization. And again, I have this tendency to always say, used by the business, but there's so many commercial, nonprofit, public sector, I mean, the work we do with people like Conservation International, Wildlife Data, yeah, there's, there's a myriad of opportunity, but if you don't ultimately serve it to the leadership, to the decision makers who can actually say, okay, how do I change my business or change the function of my organization, yeah. you're not getting any value out of it. And yeah, yes, to your other point, yeah, there's a whole ecosystem forming here, and that's where I'm spending all of my time today. I mean, there's so much dynamism in the Hadoop world. It was, it was pretty fascinating last week to see entire booths at Hadoop Summit set up just to recruit people because there's so much stuff going on there, right? So, and to New us, hires, talent. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're, they're, uh -huh. no, they weren't even trying to sell anything. They're just trying to set up boots at this event just to recruit. Come so, work for me, wow. Yeah, and I mean, the Bay Area is obviously a microcosm, or maybe, ep, well, I mean, ep, epicenter's a bad word, right, in the Bay Area, but. <laughs> that's um, okay, we're used to it. Oh, you, you're used to it, that's <laughs> right, that's right. He's, he's a Massachusetts guy, you're the Bay Area guy, right? But there's 89. so much going on. I mean, I think it's maybe a little extreme, but um, it, you know, there's so much dynamic work going on in there, and we've spent now so much time with Vertica, making Vertica interoperable with Hadoop, you know, really providing kind of mixed, mixed workload management capabilities. So, because as you said, you know, there's, there's the stuff you need in real time, there's the stuff you need at extreme scale, there's that data you're running your business on, and that's the business where like, put it in Vertica, but at the same time, we've now been able to use, and we're doing so much work with SQL and Hadoop, cost optimized storage is a big part of our drag line release, where you know if you want to keep it in Hadoop, and maybe it's data that you need to keep, because we're, we're telling you to keep everything, but you don't necessarily need the performance, or you have it, or you need to explore it, so you, know, you sort of go across that continuum of store, explore, serve, and you go backwards and say, what do I need in real time? What do I not necessarily need in real time? What do I just need to keep around? Um, you know, what's the stuff in the middle? So there's different tiers, there's different levels of data. There's a price performance continuum in this industry that, you know, you've got, you've got these technologies that can help you basically manage your data at a very low cost, and Hadoop's a great example of that. And then you've got these sort of extreme performance tier, but there's all the stuff in the middle, and so that's what companies need to make decisions on, and it all comes down to what's the value. Well, and I like, the, I like so. the word serve, because that implies mm -hmm. it's all been prepped in the back, right? And, and, right. and I'm getting my be. plate that's going to help me and you know, do something with it, right. as opposed to just you know, getting all the ingredients, and I got to figure out how to make my meal, which is going to be different than your meal. And mm -hmm. I haven't really heard that kind of description because if it's served up well, then that's going to uh, make it easier for me to do something with it. Exactly, exactly. And you know, and another thing that we've also done, because as you know, you know, Vertica has been, many of our customers are, you know, they're managing gigantic volumes of data, double, triple digit, terabytes, petabytes, you know, our petabyte club is growing all the time. And, but in many cases, most cases, I would say, as a matter of fact, they're managing on behalf of many customers. So let's take a use case, for instance, that I'm sure is true for all of us, right? We're all customers of, let's say, a particular cell phone carrier or a cable provider or what have you. That carrier, that service provider, is managing perhaps petabytes of data. Many of them are. But how much of that data is relevant to Jeff Frick? A very small amount. So, but when you go online and you need 
information on your bill or something that doesn't look right or you need service, the only data that's important to you that's relevant to you is the data that is, is a very, very small, small slice. slice. So we've, right. we've provided a way now that we can basically enhance the performance on that small slice of data. We've got something called Project, Ma Project Maverick, I should say, which enables us to do that tremendously fast, but at the same time allow the service provider to manage all this data. Same is true in things like ad tech where we've got um, service providers who are serving multiple corporate clients. And again, what client A needs and client B needs, and we need a way to segment and serve that business up in a, or serve that data up in a way that it's consumable to you, it helps you, it answers your questions, but at the same time, still manage the mass of it as well. So, yeah, I got a really question from the, the crowd, if Please. you can answer it. So we're okay. doing a crowd chat, by the way. If you okay. go to crowdchat.net. I love crowd chat. Yeah, crowdchat.net slash hpdiscover. Yeah. Somebody says, how big is the Petabyte Club? How are we talking? <laughs> How are we I talking? get that question. Handful um, of customers, uh, over a dozen? I mean, double digits, yeah. Double, double digits, digits. Right. That's, that's as specific as I'm getting. So. Right, great, well, and, we, and that's you know. not a much different answer than I gave last time that question was answered about it, asked about a year Good, so ago. So it's growing. It's, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's definitely a different place in double digits. Let's so I want to unpack uh, yes. some of the... And your uh, survey, by the way, talks about the same thing, too. Oh, yeah. I think it was something under 1% of the respondents to your survey said they were managing more than a petabyte, or right. I forget what exactly. Right. Yeah. The fat middle You was, surveyed was, on the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So I'd right. say if you want specific numbers, the Wikibon survey yeah, is well, the But it sounds like your, yeah. well, presses, I don't know right? what the percentages of Hot your of base, presses. but actually it might, it might map, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's, it's pretty substantial. Well, our, our base does tend to Maybe be a lot, of them, a lot of them on high end, yeah, because right. we're very, very good at that. So right. it's probably a high, I'm sure it's, a, I, as a matter of fact, I know for a fact, it's a significantly higher percentage than responded to your survey. But having said that, you know, it's still, that's, that's a lot of data. So, yeah. <laughs> right, how do you, a couple of years from now, we won't say that. The practitioner on the cube said to me one time, how do you know how you, know how you back up a petabyte? You don't. <laughs> so, I, well. <laughs> new uh, modes of data you protection. Have to, right? yeah, you well, have to. You protect it, and but, again, you but you don't back it up. But again, saying. this is where some of the work we're doing to really integrate Vertica so closely with Hadoop is really offering us new opportunities where we can do that. Right. So, yeah, so because you have to. I mean, it's critical data. Talk about, um, let's talk about some of these partnerships a little bit deeper. So okay. um, maybe some of the ones that you're more excited about, I know you got to be sort of Switzerland, but, but talk about uh, the nature of those partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can name names, great. I mean, I know you can, but if you, if you oh, want to, great. Uh, of course, yeah, no, I mean, happy to name names. Um, you know, one year ago here at Discover, we launched Haven. And right. the whole idea of Haven was, the H in Haven was for Hadoop. So certainly we're talking a lot about Hadoop. Our Hadoop partners are usually important to us. And the short answer on who we partner with is everybody. Um, yep. We have done, I've got a session today coming up with MapR actually, that's the next thing I've got after this, or I think one session later, about midday. Um, because we've done some really nice work to integrate with MapR to provide true enterprise class SQL on Hadoop and you know, leverage them for some of the capabilities we were just talking about. But we're doing the same work with Hortonworks, we're doing the same work with Cloudera. It, you know, it's, it's interesting because even a year ago when we launched Haven, I would say that if you looked at, at that point, Intel had their own distribution, which they no longer have. Um, Intel, Cloudera, Hortonworks, uh, MapR, they looked kind of similar. They're directionally and their strategies are starting to evolve and now they're kind of going in slightly different directions. Um, some of them actually even don't say Hadoop that much anymore, uh -huh. even though that's kind of what's at the core of their technology. But, but um, you know, we are working very hard to partner with it all because the one thing, and it's not about being Switzerland and trying to, you know, be, um, but we are trying to be open because it's what customers are saying. Every single customer I've talked to about this, and I'm sure Colin will tell you the same thing, when we've said, should HP have its own Hadoop distribution, even though, as we always like to say, you can't spell Hadoop without HP, <laughs> but should we have our own Hadoop distribution? No, customers don't want that because it's so early on, because there's so much experimentation going on, because so many of them, as your survey reveals, are still using the free distros. Mm. So, uh, you know, there, there's so much ahead of us. So we've really decided to, the neutrality is about being customer friendly because we do the same thing in BI and visualization. We do the same thing in the ETL data transformation world. We're doing the same thing, although obviously we're working very closely with the Helion team, but we're working with multiple cloud providers. We've got a great relationship with Amazon. We've got, got other great relationships there. We've got a lot of customers on AWS. So, you know, we yes, we're trying to be Switzerland, but being Switzerland is about being customer friendly friendly, but it is why the ecosystem is so, so important, because what's, what everybody's also realizing on big data is, as much as 
we, like anybody, would like to say Vertica is the big data in a box solution, and for some use cases it is, but there's so much dynamism, there's so much technology out in the market, and there's so much experimentation and learning going on right now that we really have to be able to support that ecosystem, and so that's what I do with myself. Well, it's the right call working with those guys. A lot of innovation going on, yes. particularly with the three big distro companies. Mm -hmm. And I think John Furrier joked, at the height of the Hadoop distro, you know, when Disco had one, and Intel had one, Fujitsu got one, whatever. Furry a joke that Silicon Angle was starting a Hadoop distribution. <laughs> we have one, well, you, you could, you could, and you know, we'll, we'll, be be we'll be besties if you do that. Right. But, um, <laughs> but seriously, they, I think it's actually a big competitive advantage for HP as a company to have this open approach and be customer friendly and offer freedom of choice. So, and it creates more work on our end. I mean, it's harder for us in some respects, um, but from a customer's perspective, it's the better route, and so, that's the route we've chosen to take, and, and we're really happy with how it's going. So. All right, Chris, we got to leave it there. We're getting the high sign. But okay. uh, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We will see you uh, in August, right? It's always a pleasure. We're well, be you'll, the, see, uh, you'll see me before August, but I'm sure yeah, we'll be, we'll we're be gonna, back on the theCUBE. The is going to be And we'll have the, some of our partners on as well, so at right, the uh, yeah, Vertica I'm, Big Data Conference. It's a great August. show. It's, uh, I love it because it's in Boston. I don't have to fly to Vegas. So yep, conference.vertica.com. <laughs> we would love to uh, love to have you there. One more time, we're definitely going to have you guys there. Awesome to see you. Okay. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from be discovering Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Thanks.